Hi, Mark here from the Tangibound Podcast Network and host of the flagship show, The Tangibound Podcast. Did you know that we over at Tangibound are always looking for amazing podcasts to promote? And did you also know that we are also proud nerds and geeks of everything from movies, music, gaming, TV shows, and comic books to wrestling, MMA, soccer, and football? Whatever you can nerd or geek out about, we've got it. And if you're interested, we can help you find it. And if you're a show looking for a place to call home, we've got you covered. Side effects may include upset stomach, dizziness, tumors, shakes, and in some rare cases, death from excessive laughter. Though to be fair, it's only sometimes. Other side effects may include diarrhea, gallstones, heart palpitations, and strong desire for cookies on the dark side. Talk to your doctor and visit TangiboundNetwork.com and see if Tangibound Network is right for you. everyone. Uh, my name is Jen. I am your hostess for the evening. And with me is Brian. Hey, Brian. Howdy. So, I guess since it's just the two of us tonight, mm-hmm. I'm going to have you kick it off. <laughs> so, okay. how was your week? How you doing? What's up? I've been pretty good lately. Um, I, since... You know, switching back to my lower dose of the Wellbutrin, I haven't had the shakiness, um, you know, and stuff. And yeah, unfortunately, I I was supposed to go to the psychiatrist, and um, that kind of fell through, and so I gotta make a new appointment for that because you know I haven't told him yet. So, <laughs> and that's not my intention. Yeah, exactly. Well, because of the program I'm through, I don't have a number for him. So I can't yeah. just directly call him and say, hey, here's what's going on. Um, so, you know, I, I have to go through someone else, basically. I have to call her or she has to call. And then, yeah, it's it, it's honestly silly, but whatever. What I have to do. Um, but, yeah, that's made a really big difference. And, honestly, the energy level-wise and stuff, I haven't noticed that much difference after stepping down. Which tells me that that higher dose really wasn't doing a whole lot for me, you know? Yeah. And, uh, and it clearly the shaking's not worth it. So I'm, I'm glad I did that <clears throat> because it's, it's, you know, like I said before, that's, that's so annoying to deal with. Um, yeah. So, um, and then over the last couple of weeks, I've been, um, I've been kind of pulling away from Twitter. And, well, not just Twitter, but social media in general, I've really just haven't been feeling it as much, you know? And, um, and I was like, you know, and I kind of run through cycles like this usually. And I don't know if you remember, like, I do this with electronics a lot of times. Like, I'll get to a point where I'm just like, eh, and I'll stay kind of off the internet for a few days. And, you know, I'll get on, but it's not for very long or whatever. And, um, I can, you know, so I think, <clears throat> I'm, I'm started with that, but it just, I kind of got to where I was like, I just, I just don't want to do this all day, you know, cause it, it feels like work if you do, you know, and yeah. you know, because I, I, I'm in so many groups on there that like just to stay current or, you know, contribute to these groups. It's like, I'm in over 20 groups, you know, it's like by the time I, yeah. And if I go through each one and post something, by the time I get to the bottom one, there's going to be a few that are super active, you know? And yeah, Yeah. it's 
So it, it just got to be overwhelming. And I was just like, you know what? I'm just going to pull back for a little bit and, you know, and then go back after it. And it's funny because as I've gone back to it, I just haven't wanted to as much. <laughs> so, you know, which isn't a bad thing. You know, it's really not. I mean, it's not that I, you know, there's plenty of people I like talking with and stuff. And a lot of them I've still talked with, like, one-on-one. You know, like, I'll still send them DMs or whatever. Because it's, I I prefer that way anyway. I really don't like, you know, just like in life. I don't like a, you know, I don't like a room with 20 people to try to talk to one or three, you know, that I really want to talk to. I'd rather just spend the time with them, you know. Yeah. So, yeah, but anyways, you know, it's positive and whatnot, and, you know, I got, I've been kind of not saying anything about it for a while here, but, you know, I'm, I've been talking with somebody, oddly enough, through Twitter is kind of where it started, (laughs) but, um, I've been talking (laughs) with somebody, and yeah, so, that also has been part of it, is I've been talking with her a lot, so, instead of talking on Twitter, you know, this... Mm-hmm. And, you know, obviously that's gonna, you know, um, put a dent in the, the time. Um, so, but whatever. <clears throat> Excuse me. Like I said, it's, I don't feel like I'm missing out on anything, you know, mm-hmm. and, and then that kind of told me what I needed to know about it, you know. Like I said, I, I still talk to the people I like the most, essentially, and, you know, the rest I'll jump in and out of occasionally. Yeah, so. Well, social media is a tool, you know, it's yeah. just a tool to be used and tools are, you sometimes need a screwdriver and sometimes you don't, Right. you know, and that's, well, I think that's part, really what it comes down to it. part of it too is my, my initial reason for going on Twitter was to get thoughts out of my head, to get dark thoughts out of my head. I haven't sure. had as many dark thoughts in my head lately. I've been happier. So there's less to do there and that's what like the groups are are different you know and that's kind of what twitter's become mm-hmm. in a lot of ways is a lot of people are just in these groups now and talk um but you know part of the other thing is it, i use twitter to fill a hole you know i'm i'm not with anybody so twitter was kind of my socializing well now i'm talking with somebody so it's like now i'd rather put that energy there you know because mm-hmm. this is something potentially real versus just whoever, you know, and I mean, not that I'm saying I, you know, don't have friends with the, these things, but it's just, you know what I mean? It's, it's basically looking and going, I want to live, not pretend to live, you know? (laughs) Right. Well, and then it's, it's, it's a fine line because it, there's been a lot of controversy around this, uh, whole situation with, how real is the relationships that are formed via social media? Right. And I feel that they are very real. Mm -hmm. They're, you know, it's, it's very similar to pen pals in the, in the past that, Mm -hmm. you know, you can absolutely have a relationship with someone, uh, friendship, whatever. Yeah. With someone that you've never physically met face to face. Right. I agree with you you too. It's, it's, yeah, that's been proven time and time yeah. again. So well, I, I think that's part of the way I look at it is it's like, it, like to me, it's kind of like a would I meet them in real life? You know, if I had the opportunity, yeah. would I hang out with them or you know whatever? And if the answer is yes, then I consider them a friend essentially. If the answer is no, then I'm like, okay, well that's an acquaintance. Because no different right. than, like, at work. Would I hang out with this person? No. Well, they're just a work acquaintance kind of a thing or a, a work friend. You know, like when you were in school, you, you know, as a kid, you had school friends that you didn't hang out with anywhere else. But in school, you know, you, you ran with them, basically, you know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I think it kind of fits, for me, that that's how it it, uh, it fits, you know. And, and it's interesting because <clears throat> over time... People that I've seen that way have become, like, Heno is a great example, you know? I talked with him online. I was just like, this is a good dude. I feel, you know, as him and I talked more and more, I was like, I feel like we're friends. And now we've met mm-hmm. a couple of times, you know? And, and now I 100% feel that we're friends, you know? And there's been others yeah, like absolutely. that, too, you know, that had I just immediately been like, oh, well, it's not real, 
you know, it, it might have stunted some of that. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. But there is, you know, there, there, like everything else we talk about in here, you know, I'm, I'm trying to find a different balance. Right, and right just balance now. it out. And yeah. it is it is a tool to meet people. It's a tool to have conversations and, and things like that. And yeah. You can take it to different levels. You know, there's the, the Heno levels where you become really close friends and good friends with somebody. Mm-hmm. There's also just people, like you said, do you just chit-chat with and just kind of uh, pass some time. Yeah, exactly. And Sometimes those relationships, they're, they are what they are. Yeah. And don't get and me wrong. They're, you don't have they're, the time to pass. Yeah. There can be ones that are in between too. Like the type that's like, you know, if they oh, called yeah. you, called you and say, Hey, you want to go have a beer? You'd be like, eh, you know what? Sure. I'll, you know, I'll, let's hang out and have a beer right. and talk. But you're not going to each other's like, you know, um, weddings or whatever, you know, like that kind of thing. Right. Right. So, um, exactly. real quick before I throw it over to you here cuz that's that's basically what's gone on for me this week. It hasn't there hasn't really been a lot of anything but the things that have happened for me are significant, you know. And mm-hmm. um I wanted to point out two things. Uh one is I wanted to mention that it's um mental health month and um over on nami.org they have a whole thing that people should go read and it talks about, um, curing the stigma about mental illness and whatnot. And they've, you know, they're, they're, um, pushing a, a hashtag, which is a hashtag cure stigma, um, where basically people talk about, you know, mental illness and, uh, or mental health. I'm sorry. And, uh, mm-hmm. you know, I just want to bring that to everybody's attention. Like I said, head over to nami.org. And it's, it's like right on the front page, I believe, of their site. The other thing is talking about Heno is that him and Stephanie, oh, that do the Gotham Lights podcast, they just hit their three year mark and their hundredth episode they recorded. And I wanted to say congratulations to them. Yeah. Not that I won't tell Heno myself, but you know, I just want to put it out there too. And check. Get out, folks. It's, uh, they're pretty, pretty entertaining people, so. Yeah, especially if you like Gotham. Mm hmm. Yeah. So they, that's exactly. what they do. Uh, they also have some episodes where they talk about, um, oh, what's that show? Orville. The Orville. That's on, uh, Fox. It's a very good show. I, I enjoy Orville a lot. I still have not watched it. <laughs> I have it in my, um, Hulu queue, but I, well, maybe. I don't know if it's still in there, but it was. <laughs> Very entertaining show. Right. <laughs> Which is what I've heard. I don't know. I just haven't bothered to watch it. It's just, mm-hmm. yeah. It, there's a lot to watch, you know, so. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it's, that's all I can think of for now, but I just wanted to, you know, get a little business out of the way there real quick. Awesome. So how have you been? Good. Um, yeah, work is about the same I'm starting to get into my um, my normal schedule. This mm-hmm. is my first week. I've actually had my, my traditional days off, which mm-hmm. are Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday. Um, so I'm very excited that I actually am working a normal work week. Uh, last week I worked 45 hours, which is right in my wheelhouse. Yeah. I could 45 to 55. I'm perfectly happy with that. Mm-hmm. So... I like the way this is trending and things are going the right direction. I'm feeling a lot more comfortable um, at work in my own skin, you know, in my own knowledge, um, feeling like I, I fit in to my role now yeah. a lot better. So, yeah, so things are going really, really well um, in that arena. Um, it's been interesting because I'm still working through some some social communication issues that it's just people aren't used to the way I communicate right. and I'm not used to the way they communicate. So mm-hmm. it's, it's building those bridges and learning each other's languages. So we're still on that path. Um, especially, you know, there's a couple people in particular that I'm still working with to, to get so that we understand each other better. Yeah. But uh, we had a really great conversation, me and one of the gentlemen, 
we had a really good conversation about communication and what I need. And a lot of times he doesn't give me all the information I need when I need it. Mm-hmm. And he's used to only giving the bare minimum because the other guy understood each other. They yeah. spoke each other's language. Right. They understood each other. So I had to explain to him that, yeah, it sucks, but you're going to have to slow down. Yeah. It's basically it's like two people talking like or communicating via like shorthand. And the other person yeah. doesn't know shorthand. And it's like, I don't know what you're doing here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I get you. Exactly. So, in, you know, I said, I understand it's frustrating. And I understand it. it's not ideal. Right. I said, but I'll get up to speed soon enough. He said, you just got to give me some time. And you got to help me out. Yeah. And I'll get there. But right. you got to help me. Yeah. And uh, he seemed to be very receptive to that, which okay. is good. Well, that's so. yeah, that's very good. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it was it's it's a little bit of a it's still going to be an issue, I think, for a little bit, and there's going to be some communication issues, but but it, I feel positive, very positive about everything. Well, that's good. I mean, that so. that's normal, though. You know, like whether yeah. it's a new job or a new manager or you're on a new team, whatever. It's just. You know, like you said, you you just got to figure out what language they're talking and, you know, so you can uh, work better together. So, yeah. Yeah, and kind of adapt. Right. Yeah, I'm sure you'll but figure that's, it out. That's going good. And uh, this weekend, I have been keeping myself very busy. Um, we cleaned the carpets and cleaned the furniture yesterday. And today I taunted mother nature by planting my, my garden early. <laughs> right. So if it snows or freezes over in Michigan, uh, sorry, everybody, it's my fault. Your fault. You can blame it. me. <laughs> <laughs> it's all my fault. I planted my, cause technically in, in Michigan, for those who aren't in Michigan, um, the, quote unquote day to plant is after Mother's Day. Mm-hmm. Just because up until Mother's Day there's still threats of frost. Right. Because um, <laughs> it's Michigan. Because it's Michigan. Like I was saying to I forgot who I was talking about. I think it was on Salty Language a few weeks ago I was talking about the fact that in this area, like I walked over to get the mail the other day and people still have their snow shovels right by their door, you know. Even though it's been like <laughs> yeah. sixty five to seventy five pretty much the last week or so. You know, <laughs> people still don't trust it. Oh no, and I, you, I wouldn't either. You know, mm-mm, mm-mm. you yeah. can't put the snow stuff away yet. Right, not until you get a stretch of days where you're like, okay, we've had enough time now that you know this is okay. Right, and even then, I, <laughs> I, I think we're okay, or else I wouldn't. Uh, you know, I, I dropped some good money on flowers, so I think we're gonna be okay. Yeah. You know, the next week it's supposed to drip, dip down a little bit into the 40s. Right. But uh, the stuff I got is pretty hardy. So I didn't get roses or anything like that. So right. hopefully everything lasts. Knock on wood. Right. And I already had to explain to my my dogs that that, that is not the new uh, bathroom. Mm-hmm. The new garden is uh, off limits to all puppy paws. To which they didn't seem to like this idea, right. but uh, yeah. I don't care. I feel Not like there's going to be an uprising. The... <laughs> <laughs> and if only I could keep the rabbits and squirrels and right. <laughs> other creatures not to use it, then I'd be great. But yeah. we'll see. He's got to put like a dome over it, you know, and... I, I don't un, and something underneath it so that they can't puncture from below or anything. There you go. It's all right. <laughs> have little <laughs> space capsule. Yeah, exactly. Around my garden. Right. There you go. Nice. Solved it. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so that's you know that's what I've been keeping myself really busy with. But I will say what I find interesting is I think back to years ago where. If I had two days like this back to back, I'd be exhausted. Mm -hmm. Like I wouldn't want to do anything the third day. I would have to have the day completely clear of everything and just vegetate for a day because two big days in a row was just too much. 
And now I'm at this point where I'm looking at tomorrow going, oh, okay, you know, I have, an, uh, I have a, a date with my dad to go shopping and probably grab some food. And I'll probably end up hanging out with my husband and doing some errands and stuff. And, and I'm cool with that. Mm -hmm. I don't feel that need, that desire to, to have to have that hibernation. Right. That's good. Isolation. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. really good. Yeah. So I'm, I'm really excited about that, that I feel like I've finally kind of turned that page, shall we say, and hopefully we don't have to, I, I won't go back there. I mean, mm. you never, you never know, you know, I may have to at some point, but as of right now, I think I'm in a really good spot. I'm really happy with the meds that we're on. Um, he, he added Prozac to my, um, my routine. About a month ago, I mm -hmm. want to say, a month and a half ago. That sounds right. Maybe even two months. Yeah. But uh, when he added that, I wasn't sure, but I'm sure on it, but I've really felt good on it. Yeah. Well, there you go, right? It's, mm -hmm. do you feel better than before? And if so, it's like, well, mm -hmm. <laughs> like me, my situation was like, not really, you know? So, mm -hmm. like, okay, well, this is not the right, you know, this doesn't belong in the recipe. You know, <laughs> right? Exactly. Yeah. So yeah, so it's it's going good. So I'm I'm happy. So good. Well, one of the things I I thought we would talk about today was um, there's a lot of oddities that come with anxiety, and um, the article I've I've got here is 25 weird things people do because of anxiety mm -hmm. and Brian and I were talking before the show started about some of our uh, uh, I guess you would call them quirks and yeah. stuff things that you do to when you're anxious mm -hmm. uh, you know like another thing that I, I do that I mentioned before is I stretch oh okay and you know, so I'll like roll my shoulders back and I'll stretch and just, almost like I'm putting my boobs out, but I'm not. <laughs> I'm just like, well, you know, I'm stretching yeah. my shoulders. Right. So I'll stretch my shoulders a lot. Um, you know, I play with my hands a lot. Yep. And of course, you know, I'm on Wellbutrin, so I'm going to shake. Yeah. So I do the leg tapping, the leg shaking and stuff like that. I, of course, I'll do that mm -hmm. um, and stuff like that. Well, the article basically has a community um, that you asked the question and the community responded. And these are the top 25 responses that they got. Uh, the number one is from Jessica F. And she says, I pick my cuticles all the time. That's my go-to. Oh, However, if my anxiety is worse, I'll pinch the skin at the very top of my thighs. It's discreet and it's just enough pain to pull me out of my head without being damaging. I can usually get it under control with that. Hmm. Interesting. And pain is, yeah, pain is kind of one of those um, things that you'll see through quite a few of them. Yeah. That one that never, people, you, yeah, that, that never has crossed my mind, you know, like yeah. there's nothing that I can think of that I've really done that's going to hurt, you know, because like you and I talk, my tics real quick are, um, shaking my legs, you know, um, and I've done that since I was a little kid. So that's not medicine based, yeah. you know, that's just nerves. Um, I, I bite my nails, which I'm trying to quit doing. Um, I play with my beard now. You know, before I had a beard, I had a goatee. I played with that. So as long as I've had facial hair, I've played with it, basically. <laughs> um, I curl my hair. Yeah, and I tap a lot. Like, I'll tap songs. Or to me, it's mm. a song. To everybody else, it's probably just annoying tapping. But to me, it's a song, you know. <laughs> yeah, I, I also click. Are you a clicker with pens and mouse and stuff? Definitely. I mean, like, we're, uh -huh. while we're sitting here, I've got a, a ring that I keep just rolling in my hand. Like, I'm just spinning it around <laughs> in my fingers, you know? So, it's, you know, or like you said, you know, the pen I have now is a click pen, and I keep setting, picking it up, and then I'm setting it back down, because if I don't, I'm going to sit here and click, 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 click the whole time. <laughs> 
I had to retrain myself because in the beginning, when I first started using a mouse, the clicker wasn't as sensitive. Oh, yeah. So uh, the old mouse, the old mice. <laughs> so I could just sit there and go click, 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 and it wouldn't bother anything, mm-hmm. you know. But now it's so sensitive, <laughs> you know, you <laughs> click, 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 pretty soon you're on like 10,000 websites open. Yeah, unless you so, like turn it off or something, you know. Yeah. To where you can still use the, you know, click the buttons, but it's not doing anything. So I, I, uh, stopped doing that. I had to retrain myself how to not click the mouse, but clicking a pen, popping the top of a pen, putting it back on, clicking, uh, anything like that. Those are my, you know, forget the, the fidget spinners or whatever they're called. I used to do in, uh, when I was in school, like college, I would sit there with a Sharpie and do like you were saying, where I pop the cap off of it and then snap it back in, pop it up. And, yep. you know, just during class, I do it to where I don't know how many times a teacher would be or somebody would be like, can you need to stop that? <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's like, no, I can't. I don't. I actually need to do this. <laughs> I have to. Yeah, it, it's it uh. is tough because I, I try not to do anything that's annoying to others if I can help it, you know. Right. Because that's not my intention. I just need to do something with this energy, you know? <laughs> exactly. Oh, that's the, those breathing. That's the big one that uh, people have pointed out to me that I don't oh, yeah. realize I do mm-hmm. is um, deep breathing. Right. They, they'll think I'm frustrated because I'll sit there and I'll, I see it as deep breathing. They see it as sighing. Right. I do the same thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that's why I was telling him, I'm like, no, I'm just breathing with purpose. <laughs> <laughs> Which is funny because, like, all, I <laughs> all breathing is breathing with purpose, but yeah, I know what you mean. <laughs> yeah. Yes. It's just, it's not really a sigh. It's just mm-hmm. exhaling with emphasis. Right. The next one is from Catherine G. And she says, I wrap each finger in masking tape to, like, can't bend them that after wrapping one hand i unwrap it in reverse it's a slow process that allows my mind to calm down been doing this since i was a child and i am now 46 man i wonder how many rolls of masking tape she's gone through (laughs) (laughs) right i mean like if i was doing it i mean it'd take a while to you know like man yeah wow and that's i mean i guess it works it's stuff you don't think about doing. Like, I never would have thought. I mean, I've done in in the past, I've used hair ties or rubber bands. Mm-hmm. And I've, you know, wrapped them around my finger and, you know, and got them real tight and then loosened them up. Mm-hmm. So I've done that type of stuff before. So I guess I can see the, you can see the... The purpose, I guess, behind it, the right. point. Well, really, you know, what this comes down to is a lot of, like, we've talked about plenty of times with, <clears throat> like, depression or anxiety. It's, like, usually the the technique that is employed the most is distraction. You know? Yes. And that's really what you're doing here, kind of, is you're trying to distract yourself from, like, if you're having, like, your brain just won't stop, you know? Mm-hmm. If you do these things or whatever, maybe it, it allows your brain to calm down, you know? Or maybe not. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, here's an interesting one. This is from Lee H. And uh, she says, yawn. I constantly yawn. It's annoying as hell, but I can't help it. It gets worse <laughs> the more anxious I get. It's like hmm. I can't get enough air, so I have to make myself yawn. Hmm. I've done this since I was a kid, but I only recently found out it was a type of hyperventilating. Mm-hmm. That makes sense. I didn't know that was a type, that was a type of hyperventilating. I mean, it makes sense, like you said, you know. Yeah, I didn't either, and I also learned uh, within the last couple of weeks that um, if you have migraines, that a very common like thing that goes with them is excessive yawning. Oh. Ah. Which explains a lot for me because I've always think about, and you've known me long enough. How many times where I'm like, man, I can't quit yawning. That's probably why, Mm -hmm. because I have noticed that when I have bad headaches, I yawn like crazy. You know, it could be the middle of the afternoon and I'm not tired, but I'm yawning like every two minutes, you know? So yeah, weird stuff. (laughs) 
The next one's kind of fun. Um, I have to pee constantly when I'm anxious. From Emily L. That's understandable. Yeah. <laughs> yep. That's understandable and very inconvenient. So I very, feel funny, Emily. Yeah, it's like it's one of those that's like, you know, if you have a, condi- a situation like that, you might want to talk to a doctor to make sure that it's not something else because you generally True. shouldn't have to keep peeing unless, like, you've broken the seal after drinking or something, you know, or drink a lot right. of water. It's true. Yeah. Um, sometimes anxiety turns into anger. People don't always understand why I'm angry, and even don't I don't understand in the moment that the anger stems from a surge of anxiety from mm. Sarah C. Yeah, that's understandable, too. I, mm. I've never really had that issue that I know of, but maybe I have. You know, because I could see where I it, you could do it and not even, like she said, you know, not even mm-hmm. realize you're doing it. <clears throat> Exactly. That's. I know I get frustrated. Yeah. So I kind of have to watch myself mm. that if I get anxious, I get frustrated, and I, mostly at myself. But I sometimes I think I can. It can roll over. People can pick up on it. Sure. So uh, number six, we've talked about this one already. Um, I shake a lot. It starts with my tapping my foot, then vigorously shaking my leg and tapping my hands. It's so hard to hide. So everyone automatically looks at me, making me feel like a freak. <laughs> Danielle. Does. You know what's funny? I, hear I have never, that's one of the few things that I've done that I have never paid attention to whether other people are paying attention to it or not. I just do it. You know, it's not a, mm-hmm. I don't know why, like I said, I've done it since I was a kid. You know, it's just, it's just so second nature to me now that I don't put any thought into it. Yeah, I just do it. You know, it's, it's very involuntary for me. So it's, mm-hmm. it, I don't think about it unless someone like have to make a point of asking, right. you know, I've had people tell me, stop shaking your foot. Right. I can't, but <laughs> yeah. they will right. ask me specifically to stop shaking right? or rocking. Yeah. Um, or like me right now, I'm, I'm pushing back and forth in the chair I'm in right now. So <laughs> yep. I rock back and forth in yeah. chairs and you know, um, yeah, your mom used to always hate it because I, oh, yeah. I'd be moving back and forth having a conversation <laughs> with her and she's like, no, you have to stop. <laughs> right. Because my, for those who don't know, my mom has bad vertigo. So somebody basically moving back and forth, it really throws her off <clears throat> yes. and it's bad news when it's that way. So yeah. My therapist actually, one time I was in there and I was shaking like crazy and, you know, she was like, are you really, you know, are you anxious or what? And I was like, I was like, oh, I was like the leg shaking. I was like, I just do that. I was like, yeah, I probably am anxious, but I I don't even know at this point. I've been doing it so long. I almost Mm -hmm. don't know if it's anxiety based anymore or if it's just something my body is like, oh, I'm going to do this, you know, (laughs) 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 like you're sitting, let's shake your leg, you know. I don't know. Mm-hmm. So this is a odd one, which I feel sorry for this woman because this is this, this is odd. Um, I dance like a robot, backing up and walking away while making robot sounds when I'm around a group of people and feel overstimulated and become paranoid. From Amanda N. Wow. Yeah. I'm sorry, Amanda. That sucks. I mean, unless you're playing it off, you know, like that it's funny or something, then maybe it wouldn't be so bad, but otherwise that right. seems like it would be, uh, it's weird. Cause it's, yeah, it seems like you, you're very much drawing attention to yourself too, you know? Yeah. I mean, I guess shaking does too, you know? So whatever. That's true. Yeah. But yeah, that's, that sucks, Amanda. I'm sorry. Yeah. Let's see. Number 10. Um, I collect loads of key rings and random stuff to put my keys on for two reasons. One, the thought of losing my keys causes me anxiety, so I try to make them as hard to lose as possible. And number two, it gives me something to fiddle with when I become anxious in public. Chloe C. I used to do that, too. Like, I would um, slide keys around, you know, like like you were taking them on mm-hmm. and off. I would sit there and just basically do that for something to do. And, you know, until I got to where I, I think I have kind of like a, a mild allergy a lot of times to like keys and keychains. So, mm-hmm. yeah. 
so I quit. <laughs> I, I remember been, been a long time. Changed for a long time. Yeah. Yep. Um, when I start to have anxiety or panic attacks, I like to be very cold. I don't actually feel it, quote unquote, feel it, but I know the cold is hitting me and it helps me focus on something. So dramatic changes in temperature, I've heard actually are very helpful. Yes. So, you know, I, that's why a lot of times people go outside to just catch the breath, yep. change temperature, change of, real, of the situation will change the your mindset and kind of breaks the process. Well, not to mention, like for me, the warmer I get, the more anxious I get, and then I feel like I can't breathe. So if there's an opportunity for me to go into air conditioning or something of that effect or go outside versus being inside from it, I've done that plenty of times because of that reason. Because I'll, otherwise I feel like I'll, I'll just sit there and, or stand there or whatever and I'll feel like I can't breathe. Like I'll feel like stuff's closing on me. So, uh, mm-hmm. yeah, that one definitely has worked for me before. I don't have to do it very often, but every once in a while... And, you know, you've been around me enough to see me do it, whereas sometimes I'll just be like, I gotta go outside for a minute. And sometimes it's for breathing, but there's also times that since I run hot, you know, like in the winter, everybody, yeah, everybody else is cold and I'm burning up and they're like, oh, let's turn the heat up, you know? (laughs) So I'm like, I need to go outside for a few minutes and stand in the 10 degree weather. So, you know. Good fun. Um, next one is, I always reach for my face to start clawing it out without realizing what I'm doing. Mm. I do it because I feel it crawling at the surface of my skin. Wow. Yeah. Oof. That's rough. That seems like that could lead to something else. You know, like yeah. that it could just get more and more, I don't want to say destructive, but you know what I'm saying, where it could get more and mm-hmm. more severe, the scratching. I will say, I do rub my arms because I can feel my skin crawl. Yeah. And some, you know, in certain circumstances, so I'll, I'll rub my arms to kind of make my hair and my arms stand down and, and calm me, myself down a little bit. Mm-hmm. But, uh, so I understand the crawling, you know, having my skin crawl and I will, I have it in a while because of the medicine and stuff, but I'll have times where I can almost feel like I could jump out of my own skin. Mm. Where it's like I want to get out of out of me because right. I'm so uncomfortable. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just it's almost like being in an itchy suit of clothing, right? That you just can't wait to get out of, mm-hmm. except it's your own person, right? Now, and see, it sucks. It's that fun. Feeling. Like I, I have a uh, you know skin dermatitis, so I itch a lot mm-hmm. because of that. So I, <laughs> I can identify a little bit with that because there's plenty yeah. of times where I'm like just want to tear my skin off, basically. And yeah, it's yeah, I get you. No bueno. Mm-mm. Um, next one. I love knotting my baby hair, which never got a chance to grow because I love tucking at it when I'm anxious. It relaxes me and puts me in a calm trance. Not really sure what she's referring to with baby hair, but I'm assuming it's just like little hairs. Yeah, probably. I, I don't know, know what else. And, yeah. And just, yeah, just kind of pulling at her hair. Mm-hmm. Um, I do. I'll yank on my hair. I'll twirl it. Yep. That's, that's a tick or, or whatever you want to call it, quirk, whatever, that is really common with anybody that's got long hair, you know, or, or, you know, um, cause I, I see women do it all the time and I don't even think most of the time, I don't even think they realize they're doing it, you know, or they'll like comb their fingers through their hair kind of a thing, you know, that kind of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's so interesting. There's been different times where I've mentioned it to somebody be like, you do this a lot. And they're like, I do? Like, no clue that they even do it, you know? Right. Yeah. But it's it's comforting, you know? Just like most mm-hmm. of these for these for everybody is, it's something that comforts us, you know, when we're uh, anxious. Mm-hmm. It's another one is, sometimes when anxiety is crazy, I will shower a few times a day. The warm water seems to calm me down a bit. Mm-hmm. Hmm. It's okay. Yeah. I could see that. You know, there's tons of people. I, I've, I've known of people taking multiple baths for that reason. 
you know, because soaking mm-hmm. in the tub yeah. helps them relax or whatever. So, yeah, shower makes sense too, I guess. Um, here's one right up your alley. I'm constantly hot because of my anxiety. In the middle of the winter, I'll be in shorts and a tank top because my body is so hot. <laughs> yep. Yep. Yeah. You understand that. There's I'm, a lot of times. I've gotten warmer as I'm old, getting older and I'm getting warmer. Mm-hmm. But I always usually tend to go towards the cool side. Right. Yeah. There's been plenty of times where it's been freezing outside and I'm going around the house in a t-shirt and shorts. So. Because I just, because like, like I was saying before, it's like when the heat kicks on in the house, no matter what type or style of heat that it, it's been, I feel anxious because it get, when it gets warm, the warmer I get, like I said before, I feel like I can't breathe. So I have to try mm. to stay as cool as possible. Otherwise, it kind of freaks me out, you know. Um. Number 23 is I rock back and forth in bed for about an hour each and every night. I try to stop and then my legs have to be moving. That's even after taking my anxiety medication. Mm. Yeah. Um, for the longest time when I was first on the medicine and stuff, I, my legs, I would have restless leg syndrome is the best way I can describe it. Yeah. Where it's like my legs, when I go to lay down, I couldn't sleep unless my legs are you know, moving. And then when my legs are moving, obviously you can't go to sleep. Mm-hmm. So yeah, that was always a bad one for me. Right. Um, I constantly check my social media accounts to make sure I didn't post anything offensive or inappropriate, even though I know I never would do that. <laughs> That's interesting, because the only time I would do that is if I was drunk. But mm-hmm. I generally, even that, I'm not bad about. I usually just put my phone in my pocket when I start drinking. So, you know. Yeah. But, yeah, I could see where somebody would do that, though. Because, again, that's an anxiety, you know, both parts of that, actually. Mm-hmm. Just even if it was just I constantly check my social media, that's something people do when they're anxious, you know. And yeah. also, you're anxious that you posted something you shouldn't have posted. That's pretty common for a lot of people, too. You know, mm-hmm. There's actually a comedian who, uh, in his comedy special, was talking about an app that needs to be created that would block you from texting. Yeah. Or at least give you uh, pop-ups. If you're going to text an ex-girlfriend or someone that you're in a fight with or yeah. don't want to really talk to on a normal basis, it gives you a pop-up. It's like, are you sure? Do you remember what they did to you? Hmm. And, you know, and it gives you the little reminders of, I think of I, what happened. I, if I'm not mistaken, I think there is an app out there that basically you can put phone numbers into the app and it won't let you access them once you basically enable it. Uh, that way you can not call, drinking. yeah, <laughs> or accidentally text somebody that you shouldn't text or, you know, whatever, mm-hmm. you know, so you don't accidentally text your boss something lewd, you know? <laughs> yes. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Uh, my hands are never not in use. I'm either holding something, doing something with them, or cleaning under my fingernails. Mm-hmm. It never stops. I even have a pattern I follow sometimes in a if something interrupts it, I have to start over and squeeze the tips of my fingers until I feel in balance again. Hmm. Hands are a big thing. Yeah. Because it's just, you know, keeping your hands busy is very common in a lot of these things. Yeah. I'm the, I'm a lot like that. It's it, I don't generally just sit with my hands, you know, just doing nothing. Usually, like we were saying before, I tap or I click a pen or I, you know, my hands are always kind of doing something too. So, yeah, I understand that one. Yep. Um, I check my heart rate constantly and put my hands on my throat in effort to remove the invisible hands that feel like they're choking me. Wow. That's a, boy, that, that's got to really suck. Um, you know, yeah. the, the checking of the heartbeat one's interesting though, because the more you do it, you're going to make yourself more anxious probably and elevate mm-hmm. your, your pulse, you know, so <laughs> it seems yeah. you're counterproductive I mean, there. Yeah. I have like petted my neck for lack of a better term for it, uh-huh. you know, because if I can't breathe, there's something like that. I'll put my hand to my neck, but I'm feeling uncomfortable. Yeah. But it's nothing like 
as dramatic as what that seems. Yeah, that man, that seems like that would really kind of um, torture you a little bit, you know? Like feel, yeah. feeling like there's hands on your neck. That, whew. yeah, it's rough. Um, I used to have to go and sit in the toilet. I'd be there for a bit, not going, just sitting, completely still. Mm. I have no clue why. I just did it one day, and it became a thing I did. That is getting away from the situation of, of just breaking the pattern and going and just being quiet. Yeah. I believe That's I've actually the- advocated yeah. doing that on the show. Yes. To where I'm like, if yes. things are whatever, just go sit on the toilet for a few minutes or something. And Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's the one room where people most likely will not be bothering you. you <laughs> yeah. Just go and just be quiet. Yeah. They generally leave you alone. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, this one, um, I carry nail polish with me everywhere. Anytime I get too anxious and overwhelmed by what's going on around me, I start painting my nails. It's like a fidget spinner, but with glitter. <laughs> the problem with that is nail polish can be very, very uh, stringent. The smell can yeah. get to people. Mm-hmm. So that's kind of a tough one. You know, not to mention wet nails. You have to stay still and... Yeah. Well, you don't so, have I, to. I, I mean, you know, I mean, she, you could just do whatever, you know, and have messy nails you and then, yeah, and then later <laughs> when you're anxious again, you just paint again, you know, I don't know. I doubt it, but, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, next one, I grind my teeth bad enough for other people to hear it. Ooh. I also have a thing where I shake my leg up and down with my foot on the ground. I mm-hmm. also pace around in a circle if I'm alone. Mm. Yep, that's my weird stuff I do because of my anxiety. Yeah. I do the the um, pacing thing when I'm on the phone. I don't know why I cannot oh, yeah. seem to sit down and talk on the phone. Like I usually have to get up and walk around. I don't know why, but I've been that way forever. You know? Me too. I gotta walk around. Yeah, I, I can't have a long conversation with sitting. Right, and oh, and the grinding the teeth thing, I do that also, but not generally. Like it doesn't make like I don't really grind as much as I clench my teeth. I guess I should say, you know, or I clench my jaw. I should say, um, yeah, and that's I've tried to get better about that too. And honestly, as I've worked on myself over the last few years and kind of rolled my temper back. I've noticed that I'm doing it less because a lot of times that's what it was, was I would, you know, something would agitate me and I'd just clench my jaw, you know, rather than Mm -hmm. yell at somebody or be mad, you know, go off on something. Yeah. For the record, though, it's like if you grind your teeth or clench your jaw or whatever, that's really not good for your teeth. So, you know, if you're a person who does that, you know, I'm sure your dentist has already talked to you about it. (laughs) because <laughs> mine, right. mine don't do it yeah mine yelled at me years ago to stop so uh, next one sometimes i'll just start rambling in german or sing along to certain songs also in german <laughs> to help calm me sometimes it's nice to know a second language but where i live there aren't many german speaking people <laughs> so i'm sure it seems a bit odd right you just picture somebody walking through Target and they just start singing in German, you know, and you're just <laughs> <laughs> go, okay. <laughs> it will never get you through the day. Yeah. And the last one, this one kind of saddens me, but um, I don't eat like I normally would in front of people. I feel like I'm constantly being judged, so I eat basically half of a normal portion in front of me, unless they're people I'm super, super comfortable with. Yeah, that's too bad. Yeah, uh, makes me sad. Right. And that's obviously, that's a, uh, you know, not a doctor again, but that has a deeper lying issue, you know, to, yes. to deal with there probably. Yeah. Some of these, uh, you can definitely tell that there's some underlining things that need to be addressed. Right. That anxiety may not be the only thing going on in that scenario. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 You know, another one I remember is, um, Somebody I used to work with used to um, snap a rubber band on her wrist. Oh, yeah. Like, she would just stand there, like, and she'd have, like, you know, those big, thick rubber bands, and she'd have one of those on her wrist, and she'd just snap it from time to time. And, you know, and I was like, why do you do that, you know? And she's like, oh, it's just, you know, nervous habit. But it was another one, like, with that first one that where 
I think it's, you know, the, the pain of it must be disruptive, mm-hmm. I guess, you know, so. Yeah, disrupting the pattern. Yeah. Like I said, it's, that's never been something I've, I've, uh, looked for to disrupt my patterns. You know, I, I tend to stay with stuff that's just, you know, uh, pretty simple stuff. The only thing, I guess, yeah, aside from clenching my jaw, that one's no good, but. Yeah. Yeah, I've never been really one for using pain to distract. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I have, in, I've, I've done it, but not, nothing regular or, you know. Yeah. On a regular basis or anything like that. So. Yeah. Something I kind of want to. But I think it would work. Yeah. Yeah, me too, yeah. But, you know, if you, if that is what works for you, you know, make sure you talk to your doctor about it. Because yeah. you don't, sometimes these things that seem really innocent can turn into something worse. You know, like, oh, I scratch my arms a little mm-hmm. bit. Next thing you know, you're digging yourself raw or you're, you know, uh, cutting yourself and then it gets worse and worse, you know, so that's whatever it is, you know, even the rubber band thing, you know, like I noticed over time she snapped the rubber band harder because, you know, your body gets used to the lighter snap. So you, you need something more essentially, you know, to give you <laughs> the, the rush there, I guess, or whatever, however you want to word that. Um, so yeah, if, if you're doing something, I mean, I guess realistically with all of this, you know, talking to your doctor is probably not a bad thing to make sure your anxiety is, um, that you're really attacking it the way, you know, um, uh, that you want to, um, mm-hmm. but also to make sure that, you know, your behavior is not, um, self-destructive if possible. So. Exactly. Yeah. You gotta be safe. Mm-hmm. So, you know, some of these are just innocent, you know, even a little funny, mm. um, things that we do. And some of them, you know, you, you want to be safe. Yeah. For sure. Right. So, well, what do you think? I think we're good. Yeah. I think so too. All right. Awesome. Well, you know the drill, folks. If you have an article you want us to talk about, you want to come on our show and talk with us and be a guest. If you have any questions or concerns or corrections or <laughs> anything at all on your mind that you would love to share with us, you know what to do. You can reach me on Twitter at Jen's Crazy Life. That's Jen with a G. You can also reach us at the Crazy Life Podcast at Weebly.com is our website. Uh, the Crazy Life Podcast at Outlook.com is our email address. Uh, you can also reach Heno, who's not with us today, but will be with us next week, at Heno Heiter on Facebook, or on Twitter, it's Ida Heno. And you, Brian, how can they reach you? Uh, you can also find the show on Twitter at The Crazy Life Pod, where um, I post when new episodes go up. Uh, and you can find me on Twitter at Stunami. Uh, you can find my other podcast at Salty underscore Language. Or at saltylanguage.com. That show is not safe for work. Um, as we said earlier, check out Heno's other podcast, Gotham Lights. Um, and, uh, I forgot. Oh, you can find us on Facebook at W, or, jeez, you don't need to say that anymore. Facebook.com slash group slash crazy life podcast. Um, if you're, well, actually, let me do this first. Uh, we're part of the Tangent Bound Network, which can be found at tangentboundnetwork.com. And if you are using Apple Podcasts, which used to be iTunes, um, please rate, review, and subscribe if you haven't already. We will greatly appreciate it. And if you're using um, other apps, if they have a like or share option, you know, please do that because that would help us out. You know, or just share our Facebook and Twitter posts. You know, so other people may see it and, uh, check it out. Or if you like the show, you know, please, you know, recommend it to some friends or, or whatever. We would greatly appreciate it. Um, and then, you know, I mentioned it a little bit ago, but we're not doctors, therapists, trained professionals of any kind. We're just two people, you know, reading a, a, an article or a post or whatever and giving our opinions and experiences. If you feel you need help, please reach out for help. There are tons of people out there willing to help you. All you have to do is is reach out. And I, I know it's hard. 
I took forever to do it. We all have to hit our rock bottom basically before we reach out. You know, you have to hit a point to where you understand that you have to change or, or it's going to go bad, you know? So, you know, if you, if you see that you're heading that way, try to get some help, go get the estimate with your doctor and see, you know, what they say. Um, you know, don't, don't wait 20 years like I did. <laughs> um, if you think, if you're having thoughts of hurting yourself or others, um, please, you know, reach out to someone and try not to be by yourself at that point. Um, you know, there's all sorts of, you know, suicide prevention numbers and crisis lines out there that you can call or text with, um, to kind of, you know, maybe get you through, um, a crisis. Uh, but again, there's tons of people out there willing to help you. Just, you know, you, you just have to ask. Um, and last, I would say, you know, kind of going off that last point, it's like, you know, reach out to somebody, you know, especially I'm very much a person that, you know, I notice people's behaviors, basically their patterns. And when somebody acts outside of their pattern, I'm usually like, Hey, is everything okay? Because you're now acting differently and we're all creatures of habit, you know? Mm -hmm. So, you know, if you notice somebody, um, you know, with, with the signs of, you know, depression or, or something along those lines, please, you know, reach out to them, say, Hey, you know, um, are you okay? Do you, you know, can I help you in any way or whatever? Um, or just, you know, reach out to people, tell them you love them, tell them that, uh, you appreciate them or, you know, just, just say hi, you know, especially if it's somebody you haven't talked to in a long time. Um, because you know, you just, you just never know, you, you know, you make their day potentially and you never know when you might save their life. Exactly. Well put. So that folks, you know, the drill, wiggle your toes, keep breathing and do the best to have a good week. 